Greetings, students of the Force and acolytes of the galaxy back to our archives. We've been expecting you. Previously, we produced a video about Abeloth the Mother, the accursed Star Wars entity that was born from the Ones, but not quite the Ones. The Mother who was once very much mortal and human, but who drank from the font of power and bathed in the pool of knowledge, inheriting both the ultimate power of the dark side that the Son possessed and the ultimate knowledge of the light that the Daughter wielded. In that video, we theorized that there was only a single way to defeat this terrifying dark side entity, that being the Dagger of Mortis, the same dagger that killed so many of the ones, including the likes of the father. In that video, we speculated that the dagger was the only means in which Abeloth could be eternally vanquished, and even this was mere speculation. We even theorized that the dagger could hypothetically fail. However, Grandmaster Luke Skywalker made it one of the primary missions of the Jedi Order to retrieve and locate this dagger. In an attempt that they would have it in the wings, the moment when Abeloth reared her ugly tentacles yet again. In the comments of that video, however, there began an interesting discussion. What about the might of the Chosen One in Anakin Skywalker? But not just any version of Anakin Skywalker. Could a full realized potential of the Chosen One himself rival the might of Abeloth? Could a full potential Anakin Skywalker destroy Abeloth the Accursed? And if so, or if not, why? Well, acolytes of the galaxy and students in the Force, today we will analyze and answer that question. And answer this pressing idea that was posed. Could a full potential Anakin Skywalker, the realized power of the Chosen One himself, contend and destroy Abeloth. To begin, we have to go back to the Clone Wars and the basis of this argument. In Star Wars The Clone Wars, it is revealed that it is the father that brings Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ahsoka, and Anakin to the world of Mortis in an attempt to confirm that Anakin is in fact the prophesied Chosen One. The father does this as he senses himself becoming old and tired of his job of maintaining balance between the light and the dark in his son and daughter. It is because of this that he believes that the power of the Chosen One one, while on the world of Mortis, may be enough to subdue the godlike power of the son and the daughter combined. A theory that is ultimately proven correct when Anakin Skywalker, using the energies of the world and tapping into his full potential, is able to bring both the daughter and the son to the ground, not only confirming the fact that he is capable of harnessing both of their power, but that he is also the chosen one of prophecy. This is the moment in the explanation that many fans point to when they point to a full potential Anakin Skywalker being able to defeat Abeloth. But before we outright answer that, let's look at Abeloth, who too had a very similar feat, bringing both the son and the daughter to their knees. Abeloth did what she did in order to stay with her children, but it's when her children rejected her and they realized the monster that their mother had become, therefore forcing the son and the daughter to bow before her now ultimate power. Essentially what I'm getting at here is Abeloth achieved the exact same feat that Anakin Skywalker did on Mortis. However, there are a few key differences. It is speculated that although the ones can be killed, that Abeloth herself is eternal eternal, as even Luke himself speculates and theorizes that Abeloth is an eternal entity now, and that she officially cannot be killed, only subdued for several millennia into her eventual return. There are also comments by Luke Skywalker that I would like to discuss. On one occasion, Grandmaster Luke Skywalker stated that he assumed and theorized that Abeloth's power was nearly 12 times his own natural connection to the Force. While Anakin and Luke Skywalker are the absolute greatest potential that a mortal can achieve and a non deity can achieve through the Force. Abeloth is an entirely different creature. In Legends continuity, as stated by George Lucas, Luke Skywalker inherited the power of the Chosen One and his father in Anakin. But more than this, Luke represents the ultimate potential that Anakin failed to achieve. So when Grandmaster Luke Skywalker states that he believes that Abeloth is 12 times as powerful as himself, that says something, and it roughly indicates that Abeloth is 12 times the ultimate potential of Anakin Skywalker. But then again, many fans point back to Mortis and Anakin's ability to subdue both the daughter as well as the son. Well, there's some important things here as well. It is indicated and stated by the father directly that it is because of the planet of Mortis that Anakin grows so powerful. He's literally drawing the force energy from the world of Mortis itself in order to subdue the one. Therefore, if we wanted to speculate, the full power of Anakin Skywalker on Mortis could actually or may be able to contend with Abeloth. But anywhere else in the Star Wars galaxy, and I believe that Abeloth would actually defeat Anakin quite handily. Even a full potential Anakin, 
Luke Skywalker needed the help of one of the greatest Sith Lords that had ever lived in Darth Krayt, as well as his small army of Sith, as well as several other Jedi. And again, they didn't even kill Abeloth, they simply enchained her one more time. In the Star Wars legend novel that debuted the power of Abeloth, it is stated that the father had to do everything in his power in order to stop Abeloth from outright killing the son and daughter. And that again, the father didn't actually beat Abeloth away, but more, rather stunned her, as it is heavily believed that Abeloth has more power than all of the ones of Mortis combined and is in fact immortal. In addition to this, the version of Abeloth that Luke Skywalker comes into direct battle with is an avatar of hers which is stated to not be her final or most powerful form, and again that a full potential Abeloth was roughly 12 times as powerful as Luke himself. There is now a passage in the novel that I would like to read from. Ben recalled the giant volcano at Abeloth's home in the Maw, and the pool of magma on the Padir, and quickly understood the truth of what Vestra was stating. Whether the volcano somehow fed Abeloth's power, or were a mere side effect, it seemed clear that they were associated with her presence, and on Coruscant, even a small flow of magna would kill millions. With footings and foundations melting by the square kilometer, sky towers would fall by the thousands, tumbling into their neighbors, or dissolving into the same pool of molten stone that had eaten away Away their bases. The fumes, superheated and filled with noxious gas, would kill hundreds of millions, and if a pyroclastic flow developed, the death toll would rise to the billions. And the whole time, Abeloth would be feeding off of the fear and anguish of the victims. She would grow into a being beyond mortal comprehension. With the dark side hers to command, she could literally reshape the galaxy in any manner she wished. When looking at the character of Abeloth, she very much represents the rising tension of the Star Wars universe. At this point in time, Grandma Master Luke Skywalker has defeated Darth Sidious twice, including an ultimate form of Darth Sidious which was capable of destroying entire worlds. Therefore, they have to rise the tension even higher, creating this sort of ancient force entity for him to combat. Therefore, it makes sense why Abeloth would be able to take out the likes of Anakin Skywalker, as she represents this huge, final, massive threat to a Grandmaster Luke Skywalker who has already achieved the potential of his father, and a character who is massively powerful. But again, according According to this same character, Abeloth has 12 times his natural potential. This is of course not to say that a full potential Anakin Skywalker is weak whatsoever. As George Lucas has stated, a full potential Anakin Skywalker would be the most powerful Jedi or Sith to ever exist in Star Wars lore. But Abeloth is not a Jedi or a Sith. She represents a literal extension of the dark side itself, and is the embodiment of two fully powered force nexuses, one light and one dark. And as we've stated in previous videos, the dark side gave her all of the power in the world or in the galaxy, and the light side gave her the knowledge in order to wield it. But again my friends, this is simply my interpretation of these ancient writings. But now I would love to hear what you think. Do you think that a full potential Anakin Skywalker could stand up to the might of this force entity? This force Force demon? Or do you believe what Luke Skywalker said was true, that Abeloth is indeed 12 times the might of the Chosen One? As always my friends, thank you so much for watching this video, go in peace, and may the Force be with you.